So a couple of updates on the strange investigation. Uh, Martin Lammers uh, suggested that the decay of the pet might be something to do with UV, and uh, so I had suggested that you know to take that out of the equation, uh, I would put this metal bowl over the top, which I'm going to do. And so there's that bowl. And the interesting thing is that whilst he said that. Yesterday I bought a bunch of LEDs and before I put the uh, material onto the photographic um, emulsion uh, negative and so forth, I uh, got a red, a white and a green LED here. And because red tend to be the brightest for an input power, uh, what I did was I, I, you can see the legs are bent here, um, because through the hole where the material had degraded, I um, I actually put uh, this leg uh, and then grounded this one and then put that leg and grounded that one to see if there was actually any charge clusters or electrons able to migrate out and light this LED. Well, nothing happened. But I didn't just buy a, a, a red, uh, green and white one. I mean white I purchased because they tend to be require the highest power for the same kind of uh, LED. Um, uh, I didn't bother with the other two because I wasn't seeing anything. Maybe if I had a multimeter handy I would have looked for any sort of millivolts that might have come out, but I didn't. Um, so what I did buy at the same time was, interestingly enough, a UV LED here. So um, we've got it here. And the reason I bought that is um, because uh, the suggestion that um, in Hol Holmlid's work that uh, he, when he's got the ultra dense hydrogen, uh, he's using uh, maybe UV or something, and uh, to trigger the release of uh, muons. Um, at least that's how I um, uh, have read it. But other people have used lasers and other forms of uh, light energy to stimulate uh, Lenner reactions. So I actually bought this UV LED with a view to uh, exposing the material uh, maybe on a different uh, photographic plate uh, to UV light later down the line to see if we would have um, more tracks, uh, that's assuming there are any tracks, but more tracks coming from the area that would be exposed. So that is a, almost a follow-on experiment uh, to the one that we're currently doing here. Now there's one other thing that I wanted to add uh, and I'm just going to pause the camera. The last addition to the experiment that I'm going to make is uh, to add these two small high strength neodymium magnets uh, around the source to see if there are any magnetic aspects to the particles, i.e. maybe they can be drawn towards the magnets or they can, you know, deflect the particles. So I'm going to put those onto the photographic plate uh, as near as I can get it to the uh, uh, outside polymer. Lastly, just to show you, this is uh, the segment of PET from the PET drinks bottle, just above the bit that I put as the uh, uh, test piece. Uh, and uh, a follower of the project has said that uh, when we have got the exposed piece and this piece, that they, they would be, they're going to look into. Uh, using uh, visual and optical analytical techniques, um, spectrum-based te techniques in IR and UV, uh, to see if you can observe it without, um, you know, some modifications, without actually uh, doing a, a chemical etch. So actually looking for uh, the signatures of um, spectral signatures from uh, the broken chemicals, should they exist in the sample. So. Um, so we'll be looking to send some samples to uh, Blues Doctor. Thank you, Blues Doctor, for making that offer. Here is the setup as we saw yesterday. And I just want to draw attention to the fact that we have one uh, bubble in the uh, fast neutron detector. Now, this is not unexpected because you will get some cosmic rays. And uh, I remember in California, we are observing about uh, two per day. Additionally, it is uh, below um, the, or on the 
asymptote, the sort of um, the the change in direction on on the from the straight bit to the curved bit. And uh, bubble tech say that uh, you can't count bubbles that appear in that area. So I'm going to take a closer look at that. Here is the bubble. Uh, you can just see it there. Uh, but again, it's it's in this curved bottom area, which you can't count. On the thermal neutron detector, there doesn't appear to be any bubbles in there. But I don't know whether this was here yesterday. Uh, but uh, we need to keep an eye on it. There seems to be a some sort of blemish here. Now, at first glance, I thought this might be the start of a very small bubble. There's another one somewhere down here as well. And uh, actually, on, on closer inspection, it actually appears to be a slight blistering of the bubble tech polymer outside. This isn't actually glass. This is a polymer. I don't know what polymer it is. Um, but I think we'll keep an eye on, see if there's any more of these appear, because, you know, potentially this polymer could be degraded. And actually, the, the material here inside that detects uh, neutrons is actually under some pressure um, so we'll keep an eye on that. Here I've placed uh, one of the magnets facing up and flat on the uh, negative uh, cover and then I placed another one here actually so uh, its field lines are going sort of almost uh, perpendicular to the fuel sample. Just for the record, the uh, degradation of the inner terminal PET bottle has continued. Here is the final layout with the metal UV shield. 